What's up, guys, and welcome back to the first episode of Shoots with Coops for 2021. We've had a hell of a year, um, and let's talk about sort of want to make a little video, sort of the, the decisions, photography-wise, artistically that I've uh, decided for the coming for this new year. Um, you know where I've been this year, what I've been doing, things of that nature. You know, talk about the cameras I've got, what I'm using, all of that sort of stuff. So let's dive right into it. So first and probably most obvious to you guys is, you know, I haven't made too many videos this year. I've only made a few and they've been very sporadic. And, and the main reason is because I became a dad uh, in Boxing Day 2019. My son was born, Max was born. So he's, you know, pretty much just turned one. Um, anyone out there who has, you know, kids and infants knows it's a, you know, it can be a lot of work, um, you know, with working full time, you know, having a baby sometimes you just don't get enough time to yourself and you know the opportunities I've had to make YouTube videos I felt they weren't very well thought out and kind of spur of the moment things and I wasn't too happy with a few things so I didn't post a lot uh, but this year I plan on trying to do at least uh, at least one video every two weeks more if I can um, and keep the consistency right up this year it's really you know to make more uh, you know more content for you guys to watch. You know, I love making YouTube videos. You know, I love engaging with the community, the film community. So, you know, trying to do a lot more of that this year. So I will not let you guys down. So as far as uh, camera setups and, you know, goals for 2021, um, camera setups, I'm pretty much trying to, I've tried to strip everything down to the absolute minimum um, because I don't like having too many cameras and I feel like what I have now is perfect. There's a specific reason for the three film cameras that I plan on using throughout 2021. First off, guys, is the legendary Nikon F100. Now, this is a camera I have owned in the past and I sold it because, you know, they're big, they're heavy, but they are an absolute workhorse. You know, I had shot lots and lots of film at weddings using an F100 and a 50mm, you know, Nikon 51.8G because uh, you know the, the F100 body will take all the, the G series lenses. Um, but the main reason I got this is for surf photography. Um, and that's the reason why this is the only lens I have for the F100. This is a Tamron, a new Tamron SP lens, which you know the new ones will mount and focus and everything on the F100. So this is a 70 to 300 mil. It's not an amazing lens, it's only a f uh, F4, F4 to 5.6, so variable aperture. You know, I don't need a 2.8 super fast lens for what I'm doing. When I'm shooting this lens, it's mostly, you know, f5.6 or f8 or f11. It's for, you know, really getting those long, hard to reach surf shots uh, and compositions from the shore, um, which I've always wanted to do. I've never, never, this is the longest lens I've ever owned in my life. Um, but I'll show you guys a few photos uh, now while we're talking about it, just because I love that compressed perspective um, and you know, sometimes you know, you guys know I've got the Nikon Ice cameras. Well, I've got rid of them actually now. Don't have any underwater cameras because what I'm finding is being a, a massive avid surfer, you know, when the, the surf is good enough to go out and take photos on the Nikon I'm out surfing. You know, I love you know, surfing's my my one of my absolute passions. I live and breathe surfing anytime I can. So that's what I found. I, I don't shoot the Nikon too much because when it's pumping. I'm out here getting waves, getting barreled, having a good time. And then if I have the energy afterwards, and generally I don't because I've surfed for two or three hours, then I'll swim out with a Nikonos. But sometimes I just, you know, don't have the energy. So this was something I really wanted to try so I can get those, you know, really cool zoomed in surf perspectives from the beach or from, you know, from groins, jetties, that sort of thing. Um, I hope you enjoyed some of the photos that I just showed you. But yeah, there'll be lots of that and this camera. Uh, that's this camera's main purpose. No other lens, that is just what this camera is for for the, this year coming. So next, guys, without any surprises, is obviously my Leica M6. This is the M6 Titanium, this one here. Essentially, it's exactly the same as an M6 Classic, but this is my, you know, if you've watched any of my videos, you know how I feel about Leica film cameras. Um, this is my every single day carry. I shoot this at least a frame on this camera probably every single day, at least one frame, even if it's just around the house of Max or the dogs or my wife. This is my everyday go-to camera. I love it. It's my favorite camera I've ever used, the M, M system. Um, there's, there's nothing to say about it. It's a fantastic camera. I'm not even worth doing a review on this camera because what, all there is to say, yes, it's a great camera. It's beautiful to use. There's your review. 
Um, but this is my everyday carry. You know, my, my setup is, you know, a lot of the times I've spoken about using a 35 millimeter lens over the years, guys. Uh, but what I've kind of settled on now is my two favorite focal lengths. It's a 50 millimeter. So I have my 50 millimeter Summicron and a 28. Now I have here is the Zeiss uh, 28 2.8 Biogon lens, which is a, you know, a pretty small compact uh, 28 mil. Uh, it's only 2.8, but the, most of the time I am using this, I am zone focusing, so I am at f5.6, f8, f11, so I don't need that super shallow, uh, a wide open aperture. I do have the 50 f2 for that, but this is an amazingly sharp lens. It's not as small as the new Leica uh, 20, uh, 28 2.8 Elmerit uh, lens, but considerably more expensive. These things are still pretty well priced, but these are the two focal lengths, the go-to lenses, nothing else for the M6, these two for my everyday documentary and street photography. I've been doing a lot of street photography in uh, 2020. I haven't posted a lot on Instagram because it's kind of a bit different to the theme I have going there of you know my kind of oceanscape, beach, surf, lifestyle type thing that I post on Instagram a lot. But I do a love street photography, probably do a few street photog videos throughout this year. Uh, and that is what the 28 is for. I just like to get close. And I mean, you get real close with this. But this, the M6 5028, my everyday carry camera for the, for the, well, I don't think there'll ever be another one to replace this for good. There we go. So moving on to the last one now is a camera that I've had for over a year, and that is the mighty Fujifilm GF670 rangefinder. Now, I probably will try and do a review on this camera because there's only a couple out there, but... I've held off for a while because it's such an amazing camera. I love it so much. I really wanted to do a video that would do this camera justice. Um, but I love this thing. You know, it is the best rangefinder I've ever used on a camera, and that includes any Leica camera. And I have used an M10. Um, the viewfinder on this is just amazing. It's so big and so bright and clear that it's like it's just amazing. They did such an amazing job when they built this rangefinder system. Um, but this camera, the reason I love it so much is because it's light, it's compact, you know, it has aperture priority, it has aperture priority lock as well when you're in a, you know, really want to be quick, you can half press the shutter, lock your shutter speed. But, um, you know, the, the draw side that some, downside some people think is that it only has, you know, one fixed lens, uh, you know, this 80 mil, 80 mil 3.5. But the beauty is because this camera shoots 6x6 and 6x7, you've essentially got two cameras and two focal lengths in one. When you're shooting 6x7, it's roughly about a 38 to 40 millimeter, um, which is you know really good. I love 35 and 40, you know, and it's a really good field of view. But then if you want to shoot square, it becomes closer to a 50 millimeter lens with the 80 mil on a 6x6 negative. So you know people whinge about it, but essentially because you can switch up the formats, it's two cameras in one. Um, and like I said, light, compact. I have shot so many rolls of film with this that I'll probably be showing throughout this, probably overlaid a couple. Um, I will do a video on this for some if they're curious. You know, it's an expensive camera, but it's not as expensive as sort of where the Mamiya 7s are um, at the moment. And I think it's a probably a better option for a lot of people than the Mamiya cameras. Um, it's newer. Um, they can still be repaired by Fuji, all that good stuff. Um, so that's cameras, so let's move on to the next point for this coming year. So I have been working on a book. Now, uh, years ago, probably two years ago, I did a video, a uh, road trip with the Mamiya RZ67. And that was a road trip between Perth and Albany. It's a four hour distance, you know, through the Australian, through the wheat belt, out back to get down to where I have family in the country. I've worked on that heavily. I've done a lot, a lot of photos for it. And I am trying to compile a book. Um, I've made a test book. Um, which I'll go fish out of the car because the reason it's in the car uh, is because it essentially acts as a business card for me. So when I want to take more photos, maybe on someone's property or somewhere that I would need permission, when I you know knock on that door or go and approach someone, when I whip out that book, that shows that I'm not full of shit. That you know, okay, it's actually working on a project. Look, there's a, you know this is a book that I have made that I have spent money on. You know, blah blah blah. It just shows that it's not like a, to the person you're approaching that you're not totally full of crap, so to speak. So I use that as a business card, which is why it lives in the car all the time. Um, but my plan is to try and finish that this year. It's a summer project because a lot of the photos I'm liking, I like to take throughout that outback area, lend themselves the palette and stuff I'm using is more of a 
more of a portrait palette, but more of a desert thing. So, you know, I like the dry brown grass, you know, dry wheat color palette, that brown, yellow, and light blue. So it's more of a summer project. So I'll try and whack a bit more of that out in the next two or three months and then towards the end of the year as well. But my plan is to try and finish that by the end of this year. And lastly is darkroom printing. I recently picked up a, uh, a new better enlarger from a good friend of mine, Liam here in Perth, because mine was just a hunky old student one. I really hadn't done any printing the whole until a couple nights ago. If you saw on Instagram, it was the first printing session I've done in over a year since I've had the baby. It just don't have time at nights with bedtime, and you know I had a small window. I set up, I made some prints. I absolutely love darker and printing. It is so hard and such a hard thing to master and be good at. There's so many, so much more involved in it than the average person thinks. They think, oh yeah, you just put, you know, expose a piece of paper and put it in there, put it in a tray and develop, and that's it. Oh no, no, no. For any of you that are heavy into it, you know there's a lot of things that go into it and I really want to try and work on that this year. Uh, maybe do some darkroom videos as well. Um, we'll see how we can jig that if I can set the cameras up. Um, but that is sort of the plan and here come the dogs. Oh, my baby girl is one and a half now. And Jasper's still around there somewhere. They love to interrupt, yeah, but the baby's asleep right now so that's why I'm trying to film this. So I wish they would be a little more quiet. So yeah guys, my main goals overall this year, you know, keep the consistency up on this channel. Luna, bloody dogs. Like I was saying, to keep the consistency up on this channel, you know, a lot more street photography and darkroom printing, finish my book, um, and just take more photographs, try and travel a bit more this year, if it permits, if we all get the chance to do so, um, that would be really, really nice. Uh, me and my wife are planning a few trips with hiring a camper van, that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, you guys, I, I won't let you down this year. I will make more consistent videos for you guys to watch and enjoy, and we can help grow the film community together. I hope that your 2020 ended on a bit of a high note for everyone. Let's just all look forward to this coming year and getting out, shooting, having fun with film photography. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.